This is problem 2335. In this problem we have um, a charged rod 14 centimeters long bent into a semicircle. So let me draw my best semicircle here, something like that. Not too bad for the semicircle. And it's 14 centimeters and we're asked, uh, it has a charge, a total charge, of minus 7.5 microcoulombs, and we're asked what is the field magnitude and direction at the center. So uh, to start this problem, I would ask myself, what do we know? You know, what can we calculate? Well, we know that we have a charge distributed along uh, a rod, so this is a one-dimensional um, uh, charged object. So we're going to deal with a, a charge unit length, a charge density of a lambda, charge unit length. So that's something we can calculate uh, right off the bat because we know lambda is the charge free unit length, and the total charge is 7 point, minus 7.5 microcoulombs. And we know the length, the total length is 14 centimeters. So regardless of if it's straight or curved or what it is, this is always how you get the charge density. It's just the total charge divided by the length, and that turns out to be minus 5.36 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, coulomb per meter. We convert that to MKS units. Okay. Um, another thing we know is the radius of the circle. So the uh, half the circumference is 14 centimeters. Uh, so let's see, the circumference is pi times the diameter, but half the circumference is pi times half the diameter. So then the radius must be uh, 14 centimeters divided by pi. So the radius equals 14 centimeters over pi, so the radius then is 4.46 centimeters. And the radius will tell us how far all the charges are from the point we're interested in. So you would start just calculating those, those things that, that we know, that we can figure out. And then you can look at the problem and ask yourself, uh, what field do you expect to get? So whenever you have a continuous problem, you got to think about how you're going to break it into components. Right? So this is a uniformly charged rod, so you might imagine a component there, 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 components all the way through, and think about what field you're going to get. Okay. Now here's the tricky part, inspection or not inspection. To inspect or not to inspect. What I'm planning on doing is leaving these things in terms of just lambda and r. When I do all my calculations, I'm going to just write lambda, I'm just going to write r, and I'm going to plug them in at the end. That's how we like to do it. That's much, that leads to less numerical errors. So since I'm going to do that, I'm going to ignore the fact that it's negative for now. When I make the charge, when I plug in a lambda at the end, I'll plug in a negative number, and that will take care of the fact that the field might go the other way because it's negative. Right now, I'm just going to assume it has some charge lambda, and when you don't specify it, you assume it's positive. So I'm actually just going to say, if there's some charge here, dq, it's going to create a field like that. Okay. Now I know in the real problem, it's negative charge. The field due to that part would be up. But that will all happen when I plug in the negative lambda. So right now I'm just assuming some lambda. So this would make a field like that. Uh, this would make a field like what? Like that. And actually, if this one is dq and that's dq, and at the same distance, those two are going to cancel. Uh, you can imagine this dq would make a field, again, just treating it as a general lambda, a positive lambda, like that. This dq would make a field like that. This dq would make a field like that. So you can kind of see what happens. As we go around all these dqs, it creates little field vectors like this. And you can start to see the symmetry of the problem. The vertical components are going to keep canceling the horizontal components are going to keep adding. For instance, this vector and this vector have a vertical component, one that goes up, and a vertical component that goes down, those cancel. But they have horizontal in the same direction, and they sum. So you can see there's going to be some uh, parts canceling, some parts summing, and we have to keep it all straight. Okay. And you can already start to see, it actually doesn't matter uh, that I'm doing this in terms of positive lambda, because you would just have to flip all these the other way. So all these would be going this way, but the vertical components would still cancel. In the end, it wouldn't matter. Anyway, so we have to calculate the field at uh, point E. So to do that, you want to think about the charge you're dealing with. We're calling this dq. And now we have to think about the coordinate system we're going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this uh, whole thing. It 
us an idea of the symmetry. Let's put our origin back there. And whenever we have something curved, whenever our chart is curved, we have to use polar coordinates. Here we have a case where we know all the charges, all the little dqs, are in a distance r. We're going to label it r even though we actually already calculated the value. So for instance here, we're going to go right here on the edge of the thing, so we know that that is r. And we know that we have a charge dq that will be lambda times this little length dl, or dx, whatever you want to call it. This little gap, if you want the charge dq, it's always a linear charge density times dl. Now, I'm not calling it dx. In Cartesian coordinates, you'd call it dx. Here, we're moving along a curve, so often we call that dl. But the question is, what is dl? So dl is not dr. You'll notice, as you go across the little dl, r doesn't change. Right? r is constant. As we move all the way around the curve, r is constant. What's changing, as you go across dl, is theta. That's d theta. So, if you were to think about arc lengths for a second, you would realize that that length dl is just r times d theta. And if you study your calculus book about polar coordinates, it'll give you all the little definitions of dls and d areas and dxs and all these things. So dq, in this case, is lambda times r times d theta. And that d theta is telling you something. That tells you when you do an integral to get the total field, you're going to integrate over theta. Theta is the thing that changes as you go around the curve. R is a constant in this interval. R will be a constant. There. Okay, so I have a charge, uh, lambda r d theta, which means we're ready to go ahead and write um, uh, DEP. We're going to figure out what does that little charge, what field does that little charge create at the origin. And to see it, I'm going to erase uh, this again. There's many things we have to draw on top of each other get this right. Okay, and I'll give myself some room here. DQ, we've decided, is lambda r d theta. Okay, so we want to figure out uh, what is the E field here. Now we talked about all those vertical components canceling and all those horizontal components adding. So that tells you that we also need a Cartesian coordinate system. We need to do get the answer in terms of x, y we can see all the y's cancel and all the x's add. So in addition to this polar coordinate system where we have r going this way and theta going around, I'm going to draw on top of it uh, a Cartesian coordinate system. So there's y and there's x. And I'll move uh, uh, dq and we'll think about just a general dq, not the one right on top. Let's think about this dq right here. dq equals lambda r now we're thinking about this dq right here, and it is, at this position, theta, and it's some distance r. And here, now, we've got to think about the field we're going to get along the x-axis and along the y-axis. We've got to figure out what the field DEP is. The little piece of field we make with dq is called DE. What's it going to look like? Well, again, we're thinking of a general lambda. We'll just pretend it's positive, and it's going to look like this. If the, char the charge is here, then the field We'll point away like that. DEP due to that DQ. So now we can go ahead and uh, start to write that out and say uh, DEP and the magnitude then is uh, Coulomb constant times the charge on the top, lambda r d theta. over the distance in the bottom. The distance is just r squared. And that will be the magnitude of uh, DEP. But we have to think about direction. So remember, we're wanting to figure out how the vertical components will cancel and the horizontal components will add. So I'm not even going to assume that's true. We'll just do the whole thing uh, in detail, and we'll find the vertical component ends up being 0. So let's go ahead and just do that. Then. Let's think about uh, DEP. So it looks like this. Its components uh, are there, there's its y component, and there's its x component. So we're going to figure out uh, what those components are. So if theta is here, we're going to integrate from theta equals 0 all the way around. But theta is 
there. This is a long answer. Okay, battery died. Here we go. Let's keep going. So we had decided then that this is the magnitude, and uh, we're going to have to break it into components. One of them is going to be along the x-axis, one's along the y-axis. We know that the total vector DEP is this way, two components that way, and here's theta. So we really just have to get the uh, cosine and sine component uh, of the DEP. Well, if you look at it, in this case, actually, cosine is along the y-axis, the way I drew it. Okay, cosine is not always x, and sine is not always y. Sometimes it happens this way. So if theta is this nice uh, positive value here, it makes uh, the field point down. Okay? So if we're going to do, uh, well, let's do the x component first. So if theta is here, uh, then the x component is DEP times the sine of theta. Right? So that's down here, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's the DEP times the sine of theta, and we can write I hat. That's the x component. Now we also want uh, the y component. And you can see that's just going to be the cosine, but it's going to be negative. Because when we draw it like this, it's pointing down, and I made positive y that way. So that's going to be minus k. Everything else is the same. Lambda r d theta over r squared cosine theta j hat. So there's the EP. So now let's integrate and figure out um, what the total is when we do the integral. Okay, so the integral of DEP, of course that's just going to be EP. We sum up all the little DEP uh, vectors, we get EP. Now let's integrate here. So we're integrating, and what we're integrating with, we can always tell, is whatever is here. So D theta, we're integrating with respect to theta. And when you look at the problem, you can see you're integrating from theta equals zero all the way to theta equals pi. So we write this integral from 0 to pi. Um, and we can see we can start combining some of these things. The r's cancel. It's k lambda over r sine theta d theta i hat minus integral. So both integrals are over d theta. They're over the same bound, 0 to pi um, k lambda over r cosine theta d theta j hat. So this just becomes EP. And let's see, the uh, uh, integral of sine is negative cosine. So the negative shows up, sine changes to cosine, d theta goes away. So this is minus k lambda over r cosine theta evaluated 0 and pi. So write that. And then this one still is carrying its minus. And uh, the uh, integral of cosine is sine, so it just it stays minus sine. K lambda over r sine theta evaluated 0 uh, to pi. And I left off, this is i hat, and this is j hat. Okay. And now let's just evaluate it. Um, this equals uh, minus k lambda over r, and cosine of pi is negative 1, minus cosine of 0 is 1. Right. It's this, this value, value evaluated here, minus the value evaluated there. So that all is going to come together to make that's minus 2, and that minus goes away. That's all going to end up being 2 k lambda over r i hat. Okay. Got away from myself. Uh, I got ahead of myself. Uh, here we have minus k lambda over r, and then sine of pi is 0. Minus sine of 0 is 0. J hat. And sure enough, the uh, Y component all cancel. It all went away. Just like we thought it would when we looked at the symmetry of the problem. So the answer then, EP, is 2k lambda over r i hat. So what it's saying is if we add all these vectors up, only the horizontal components will end up giving you a value. It'll be something kind of like that. It's a positive value in the i hat direction. But wait, remember, we knew that we drill these vectors backwards. When we go plug in, what are we going to get? We're going to plug in 2, we're going to plug in 9 times 10 to the 9, we're going to plug in um, 0.04 meters, but lambda was minus 5.36 times 10 to the minus 5 centimeters. So that's going to turn this value negative in the
the final answer is minus 2.16 times 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb uh, pi hat. So the question is what is the magnitude and the direction? The magnitude is 2.16 times 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb. And the direction, how you answer that, depends on how you do the problem. If you do it with coordinate systems and unit vectors like I did, then you look at it and say, well, I hat is the positive x direction, it's negative, so it's to the left. So in the end, you get this magnitude, and you have a vector pointing to the left. That's the end.